afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon, Councilman. I'm going to just focus on two items. Uh, the first item is uh, with regards to uh, local law 65 of 2016. This is uh, allowing for people to track absentee ballots, find out if they're registered, what their party is, what the next election is. Uh, we had a hearing, uh, I think back in 15 or 16, uh, back in 2015, and it seemed like your technology was well along and uh, that you're on your way to getting the system up and running. Uh, the uh, administration did not comment on this legislation and they did not sign this legislation. It aged into law. Uh, recently, uh, while I was out on paternity leave, uh, the mayor has come out and said that this legislation is part of his democracy agenda for which they're calling a charter revision commission to, to, to get this done. Uh, so I'm just checking in to see where we are on that. Oh. Additionally, the other question is just what do we need to do so that there aren't lines on election day and that we don't have pulse sites such as the ones in my district where the line is a result of overcrowding within the uh, facility itself? Okay, so with respect to your first inquiry, um, leaving off to the side the, the mandate, no mandate argument, which we've uh, had in a friendly uh, and professional way over the course of time. Um, simply put, 2016 happened. Uh, we had the issues, uh, that as painful as it is for me to resurrect, uh, we had the voter registration issues in, in Brooklyn, uh, followed shortly after that uh, by the cybersecurity issues uh, that, uh, that arose uh, just prior to the presidential election. We were poised to launch a new website um, right before uh, the presidential election. Uh, we were discouraged uh, from doing so by the cybersecurity folks uh, because that new website is going to involve a different platform. We're going to be moving away from the uh, do it hardwired server platform to a cloud-based platform and in light of the events just prior to the presidential election, uh, we were advised that it needed more robust training, uh, not training, uh, testing, to make certain that the website is tucked firmly behind the cloud-based firewall. Uh, so, in addition to that, as a result of a lawsuit that was filed in 2016, we had to work very diligently to essentially overhaul uh, the entire process software process for processing uh, election results. Uh, so what happened is all of that got put on hold. We're anticipating uh, a launch of the new website. I'm, I hope I'm not getting too, you know, what's the new phrase now? Over the tips of my skis on this one. Uh, but uh, sometime in the second quarter of this year, my hope is that we'll launch the new website. When we launch the new website, there's going to be two features on there, uh, at least two features that should be uh, near and dear to your heart, uh, Council Member Kalos. Uh, one is an electronically assisted way of filling out a voter registration form uh, and electronically assisted way of, of filling out an absentee ballot application. Both of those will be able to be printed with a QR code on them and we will receive the data from the voter. We're still uh, following the rules as, uh, stated by the, um, as stated by the Attorney General in their interpretation that the two delivery methods are either in person or by mail. So we're not quite all the way home yet. Uh, but what will happen then is once we get your uh, voter registration form or your absentee ballot application, we scan that in. The QR code will identify that that data has already been received. It will marry that document and will eliminate redundant data. We also have um, now, um, I guess a little bit of the delay has saved us some work uh, in that the United States Postal Service, of course this flips it really back onto the voter, but the Postal Service itself has an, uh, a ballot tracking uh, application that we are in the process of, of implementing. And then I would envision, since the, po the Postal Service has already done it, if, assuming it works, and um, we have been told uh, that it does, that we will 
help to advertise that so that the folks that really want to track their ballot uh, can do it in a way that the post office uh, can guarantee it. And I think if you add those few things together, that's a, that's a pretty good step forward uh, in terms of uh, what the spirit of, of the prior bill that was uh, lapsed into law. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, with respect to the lines, lines are a challenge. Um, when it comes to older neighborhoods, older, more established neighborhoods, they typically have older buildings. Older buildings are not as conducive to uh, the elections process as we would like them to be based on the current equipment that we have available to us. So some of the crowding, uh, if you will, that leads to the long lines has to do with the fact that we have to deploy privacy boots and ballot marking devices for those uh, members of the, uh, of the disability community that need to access that, as well as the DS-200 scanners. There is new technology that is coming uh, that would aid greatly in that regard, not the least of which uh, would be uh, electronic poll books. Uh, our board has officially taken uh, no position with respect to that because we are of the opinion that the state legislature is very well aware of what they, uh, what they need to be aware of in this regard. And if they have any questions for us, we're certainly happy to answer those questions. Uh, so in the meantime, I think concentrating the poll workers on public service is, is a helpful way to go. Uh, we're also implementing the voter list onto the tablets as a way to try to get away from the, those paper uh, lists that we, that we give out for street finders. Uh, but we're still going to have places where there are lines in volume election events. And I'll, I'll give you for an example the president's poll site. I personally visited that poll site prior to election day. And until you saw it in operation, it seemed like a perfectly suitable place uh, to have an election. And then when you factored in all of the security concerns that were there when a presidential candidate is voting there, and an isolation of an elevator and not allowing free flow up and down the stairs, it really made it into a difficult uh, operational uh, circumstance on election day. That happens to us sometimes what looks to be a good feasible location when it's empty and there aren't people there uh, sometimes gets us a little bit turned around on election day when there are high volumes of, of voters. So on the one hand, I would say, yes, we want to absolutely maintain the lines at no more than 30 minutes. That's a, that's a noble goal and we should do that as quickly as we can. Uh, however, um, reality is Volume makes a difference. And when people are waiting online, that is the sign of a healthy democracy as well. Not that we're looking to inconvenience anyone. Thank you for the uh, good news on Local Law 65 as well uh, of 2016, as well as the online uh, voter registration. And so uh, in, the, in the next three months, you th or, or it's by June 30th? Well. We're hoping the thing that we have to do to meet our mandate with the federal government is to get our AVID, uh, which is the uh, voter registration system, that, that has to be up and running uh, by the end of the first quarter, early second quarter. Uh, so that's our first priority, and this is a, another circumstance where uh, wants have taken a backseat to needs, okay. uh, and we have to do that first, and then shortly after that, uh, we'll be able to do the other implementation. And just to be clear. The first quarter is, uh, tw uh, is about 12 days, 12 days away. I, 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 I'm, I'm aware of that, but that's almost half a month, depending on if you want to look at the glasses half empty or, or, uh, so that, or, or half full. So that's good news. Let's just get it done before the Charter Revision Commission gets implemented and before I go back on the second half of my paternity leave. Uh, just to follow up on the I, I do want to make one clarification. I said electronic assist in the voter registration I process. I understand. I did not say online voter registration. I, I understand. All I, right, I, thank I, you. I appreciate it. It's, it's steps in the right direction, and I would just ask to sit down and go over with you, just making sure that I can set an alert 
on the profile to make sure that if my voter registration address changes or whatnot that I can get alerts or reminders to request an absentee ballot or whatnot and then similarly uh, for the uh, online uh, voter assistance for registration that there's an API so third parties can work with your system and also just if uh, somebody fills out the form that they get a reminder that hey you're we haven't received your voter registration form just oh, on and the other thing the other bit, bit of good news that I wanted to dovetail into that and I forgot was we are also uh, and I don't have a direct implementation day but we have we're pretty far along in terms of developing our own uh, voter information portal uh, similar to the one uh, that you have access to through the State Board of Elections, but we'll have one for the city as well. That is great news. So on the uh, overcrowding, my district is one of them. Uh, would you deploy staff to go through the election district? How many people per election district? 500? No, it's actually 1,150, and we've asked the state legislature this year to raise that to 4,000. So I, I have buildings in my district that are an election district. Uh, would the Board of Elections commit to going through the poll sites that have uh, five or more EDs in them that were overcrowded with lines more than half an hour on Election Day or even more than 10 minutes and uh, come back to my office and, and do a site survey because I, I, there are buildings in my district that have door, uh, door uh, service workers and they have large lobbies, and uh, I, I can't imagine a, a worse excuse for voting than saying there's literally a poll site in your lobby, and if we uh, decentralize the poll sites that currently have 10 EDs in them, uh, and you don't have 10,000 people trying to vote there once every four years, but they're just in their lobbies, I understand there might be added expense, but it will we, limit the We lines. are happy to work uh, with anyone to develop more poll sites. Um, one of the issues that we had, and I, I don't want to say with specificity, but we, we were criticized uh, in the last election uh, for moving uh, some voters out of, a, out of an apartment complex. Um, the reason that we, we had to move them was the, the small room that was uh, available to us uh, what just wasn't large enough to fit all the equipment in it, and based on the calculation of one election district per every 1,150 voters, we've asked the state legislature to give us some flexibility to increase that to 4,000. Even if they increased it to 3,000, we're not looking to jam more people into election districts. But what we are looking to do is to acknowledge that New York City isn't, you know, Western New York. We have a lot of high-rise buildings, and if we could have larger election districts, particularly in those buildings that have a, a substantial vertical population, we could deploy less equipment and still service more voters and, and, and take away some of the, uh, the physical clogging of the locations, which would allow the lines to move faster as well. And if, within that context, there are other locations within buildings, uh, we can we can certainly explore that as well. I can tell you in the one particular incident that I was talking about, we explored every uh, other available location within the, the footprint of this particular housing uh, complex uh, to no avail and quite frankly didn't get a lot of local cooperation. But of course, the minute that we moved some voters down the block, we were the worst people on the planet. Thank you so much, uh, Councilmember Yeager.